Now, let us discuss question number 64. It states that number of 3 digit numbers which are neither divisible by 4 nor by 5 is out of these options. So, you know that we have total 903 digit numbers out of that you need to figure out those numbers which are neither divisible by 4 nor by 5. For obtaining so, firstly we will try to obtain those numbers which are either divisible by 4 or by 5. So, if we talk about the numbers which are either divisible by 4 or by 5 then firstly I will be calculating the numbers which are divisible by 4 that is the 3 digit numbers which are divisible by 4 then I will be calculating 3 digit numbers which are divisible by 5 then I will calculate the 3 digit numbers which is divisible by both 4 and 5 that is 20 because the number which will be divisible by 20 that will be also divisible by 4 and that will be also divisible by 5. So, if you want to calculate 3 digit numbers divisible by 4 that means number of 3 digit numbers divisible by 4 you need to calculate the largest possible 3 digit number divisible by 4 that is 996 and smallest one is 100. Take the difference divided by 4 and add 1 to it. So, this simplifies to the value 225 that means there are total 225 3 digit numbers which are divisible by 4. Next number of 3 digit numbers divisible by 5. So, the largest 3 digit number divisible by 5 is 995 and smallest one is 100 divided by 5 add 1 to it here the sum total is 180. So, there are 180 such numbers which are divisible by 5 and there are th 3 digit numbers. Next coming to number of 3 digit numbers, number of 3 digit numbers divisible by both 4 and 5 that is divisible by 20. So, the largest 3 digit number divisible by 20 is 980 and smallest one is 100 upon we have 20 plus 1 here the sum total is 45. So, we have total 225 plus 180 plus 45 such 3 digit numbers which are divisible by either 4 or 5. If you want to obtain 3 digit numbers which are neither divisible by 4 nor divisible by 5 then out of the total 3 digit numbers we will be subtracting these possible numbers or the number of these possible numbers divisible by either 4 or 5. So, you can write here that required number of 3 digit numbers is basically total number of 3 digit numbers minus 225 plus 180 minus 45. When you simplify this you get the final answer as 540. That means there are total 540 3 digit numbers which are neither divisible by 4 nor by 5. So, we get here the clear answer out of these 4 options you can clearly see here is option number 2 as the answer for this question you can mark here the answer as option 2. I hope it is clear to you. Let us take up our next question. Here I have question number 65 which states HCF of 441, 315 and A is 21. Then the value of A cannot be these options where options are 672, 252, 525 and 336. So, here talking about these given numbers if you see 441 here LCM of these 3 numbers is 21. So, it can be factorized as 21 into 3 into 7. Next we have this number 315 it could be factorized as 21 into 3 into 5 while we do not know about this number A, but it is for sure that these 3 numbers have HCF as 21. So, 21 will be one of its factor into I am considering here an integer k where this is basically 21 into k, k will be some factor of a, but as the HCF of these 3 numbers is 21. So, this k cannot be equal to 3 because you can already observe 
3 is one of the common factor apart from 21 present in these two numbers. If 3 is also one of the factor or value of k apart from this 21, then HCF will change to 21 into 363. But in the question it is already provided that HCF of these three numbers is 21. So, we cannot have the value of k as 3. If the value of k becomes equal to 3, then a will become a multiple of 63. So, k should not be a factor or multiple of 3. So, if k becomes here k cannot be a multiple of 3. If k cannot be a multiple of 3 then that clearly means a cannot be a multiple of 3 into 21 that is 63. Therefore, a cannot be a multiple of a multiple of 63. So, we have to go with the given options. Whichever option is giving me a value as a multiple of 63 that cannot be value of a. So, one by one when you check each of these options you will find that option number 2 is 63 into 4 that is 252. So, that is why here value of a cannot be equal to 2 and you can definitely mark your answer for this question is option 2. I hope it is clear to you. Now, let us proceed to our next question. Here this question states in a triangle ABC, D and F are midpoints of AB and DB respectively and DE is parallel to FG, FG is parallel to BC and EH is also parallel to AD. Then the ratio of the perimeter of DGF and that of GCHI is. You can clearly see in this given figure we have triangle ABC where the sides AB, BC and AC are labeled as X, Z and Y respectively. So, let us proceed with this question. As per the information given in this question, D and F are the midpoints of AB and DB. You can clearly see here AB is X, X by 2 as here D is the midpoint of AB, DB will be also X by 2 and F is midpoint of DB. So, it will make x by 2 half here as x by 4, df will be x by 4, bf will be also x by 4. After that, you can see in this question it has been provided that de is parallel to bc. If d is parallel to bc and d is midpoint of this side ab, using the converse of midpoint theorem, we get that e is midpoint of AC. If E is midpoint of AC, this becomes y by 2 and EC also becomes y by 2. And here FG is also parallel to BC. If you apply here intercept theorem, then these sides are divided in same ratio. Here F is midpoint of DB, that is why G will be also midpoint of EC. AE and EC becomes y by 2. So, EG and GC becomes y by 4 itself. Next, Using the midpoint theorem, D will be half of BC, that means it will be Z by 2. Moreover, here we, if we consider DE, H and B, here EH is given to be parallel to AB. If EH is parallel to AB, E is midpoint of AC, that makes H also a midpoint of side BC. So, this side becomes Z by 2, here this side also becomes Z by 2. If this is z by 2, fi will be also z by 2 because these are 3 parallel lines and here dehb becomes a parallelogram. Moreover, as you see f is here dividing it in the same ratio g is midpoint of ec and this line is parallel to the side bc. So, this i also becomes midpoint of the side eh. i and g both are midpoints of the triangle side. So, if we consider this triangle EHC, here I and G are midpoints of the side EH and EC. So, using the midpoint theorem, this will become half of the side HC that is Z by 4. So, we have obtained the measure of all the sides, but here if you focus FIHB will be also a parallelogram because you already have Fi parallel to BH and you have BF parallel to HI. So, this is x by 4, 
the side will also become x by 4 that means ih will be x by 4. So, we have obtained length of each and every portion now further you need to figure out the ratio of perimeter of degf and you need to figure out its ratio with gchi. So, let us proceed with this question further. If I talk about perimeter of perimeter of de gf then we have the side de measuring z by 2 plus we have the side eg measuring y by 4 then we have the side gf measuring z by 2 plus z by 4 equal to 3 z by 4 plus we have the side df measuring x by 4. Next coming to the quadrilateral which is GCHI. If I talk about the perimeter of GCHI, here you can see I have the side IG as z by 4. Next I have the side G C as y by 4. Next you have the side C H as z by 2. Further you have the side H i as x by 4. So, we have considered these on basis of this let us obtain ratio of their parameters. So, let us divide these two. On dividing these two you are going to obtain here the simplified value. You can see this is z by 2 plus y by 4 plus 3 z by 4 plus x by 4 where you can take LCM in the numerator as 4 and this quantity will reduce to 5 z plus x plus y whole by 4 upon on taking LCM in the denominator LCM will be also 4 resulting here 3 z plus y plus x whole by 4. You will find this 4 4 gets cancelled and the final ratio of the perimeters of these two quadrilaterals will be 5z plus x plus y upon 3z plus y plus x and when you go with the options provided in this question here the perimeter of DGF and GCHI is clearly found here in option number 3. You can see that this is the ratio of the perimeters which we have obtained. So, you can definitely mark the answer for this question as option number 3. I hope it is clear to you. Now, let us proceed ahead to our next question.